March 2020. 31 days the world is not likely to soon forget. It was the month that a new coronavirus that had infected tens of thousands in China became a global pandemic. Take a look at the infection rates. On March the 1st, nearly 89,000 cases of COVID-19, the disease caused by the virus, had been reported worldwide. Then, the vast majority of the cases were still in China, the original epicenter of the disease. By the end of the month, infections worldwide increased nearly 10 times to nearly 860,000 cases, and deaths soared from over 3,000 to more than 40,000. But how did things get so bad so quickly? Early March saw Iran and Italy suffer dramatic increases in infection numbers. <coughs> Iran's health minister was one of the first public officials to be visibly sickened by the disease. Iran's epidemic reached the top levels of its government and mass graves were dug in the countryside. In Italy, the virus spread fast despite early attempts to protect citizens from the novel coronavirus. The nation had already declared a state of emergency by the end of January, after a Chinese couple holidaying in Rome tested positive for COVID-19. Italy reported its first local case on February 20th, but scientists believed the virus had already been circulating in the country for some time. During Italy's peak flu season, people were being diagnosed with influenza, when they may have actually had COVID-19. Infections in Italy rose from four cases on February 20th to nearly 106,000 by the end of March. By the end of the month, nearly 12,500 deaths related to COVID-19 were also recorded, more than three times the number of fatalities in China. This despite the government ordering a lockdown for the entire country on March the 9th. The decision is just today e di restare a casa. Il futuro nostro dell'Italia è nelle nostre mani. Visiting Chinese medical professionals said more needed to be done. 我看到了他的公交车还在运行。我看到了他的人还在运行。我看到酒店人还在聚会。我看到很多不戴口罩的。After Italy, Spain has the most COVID-19 related deaths in the world. Nearly 8,500 people died in March. And infections there jumped more than a thousand times. The Spanish government announced a near total lockdown on March 15th to try to curb the spread of the virus. But after two weeks, thousands of new cases are still being reported every day, leaving hospitals overwhelmed and the health service at breaking point. While much of the rest of Europe restricted people's movements, the United Kingdom took a vastly different approach at first. In early March, Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his top medical and scientific advisers said it wasn't necessary for people to change their habits. They hoped to stagger the rate of infection in the British population so as not to overwhelm the public healthcare system. But the government soon changed its tune. A study by Imperial College London showed that the death toll for their strategy could reach as high as 250,000. As the number of new cases accelerated, Johnson was still only encouraging people to self-isolate when sick and to practice social distancing. Restaurants, pubs and entertainment venues remained open until finally on March 20th. We are collectively telling, telling cafes, pubs, bars and restaurants to close tonight as soon as they reasonably can and not to open tomorrow. By then, nearly 4,000 people in the UK had tested positive for COVID-19. In the following days, Prince Charles tested positive and then Johnson himself became ill, running the government via video conferencing from self-isolation. Over the course of March, infections in the UK went from 36 to over 25,000. And from zero fatalities on March the 1st, the country saw nearly 1,800 succumb to the disease by the end of the month. We're talking about very small numbers in the United States. 
We've all done a very good job. That was President Donald Trump at the beginning of March, when there were 158 cases of COVID-19 in the United States. In two weeks, infections had risen to 9,197. Despite mixed messaging from the White House, the government did finally urge people to stay at home if they, or a family member, showed symptoms of the virus, and to limit gatherings to no more than 10 people. We really want people to be separated at this time. But in the two weeks following the plea, COVID-19 cases in the US increased to more than 188,000, and the death toll shot up to more than 4,000 people. President Trump backtracked from a plan to return America to work by Easter after his task force projected as many as 2.2 million Americans could die from COVID-19 if more action wasn't taken. The better you do, the faster this whole nightmare will end. Therefore, we will be extending our guidelines to April 30th to slow the spread. As global COVID-19 cases surged in March, life began to slowly return to normal in mainland China. The number of new infections and deaths plummeted in the country, with the majority of new cases being those imported from overseas. Officials credit the complete lockdown of Hubei province, as well as tight restrictions and quarantine rules in other cities, as being key factors in containing the virus. For many other countries still struggling to stop the spread of COVID-19, the next several weeks are crucial in determining whether April will be better than March.